Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and today is December 2nd, 2022 and you are joining me for Paper Crafting Playdate. This is episode 77 on this first Friday in December and I hope that you are doing wonderfully. I hope that the stress of the holidays isn't taking its toll on you. Um, just yet or if ever, hopefully not. And I'm so happy to be with you. So I have a um, card template. It's been a couple months since I've had a new card template. So I am really excited to share this card template with you. You will be able to use it for um, Christmas cards if you still need to make some cards. But this template you can use for anything. So I think it's going to be amazing. And let's get started. So let's look at the stamping table here. And I want to just take a few minutes to walk you through all of this amazing happy mail that I have received in the last couple weeks. I've had a birthday and we've had uh, Thanksgiving. And so what that means is there was a lot of cards in my mailbox and I can tell you that it is absolutely thrilling to me to receive every single one of these cards. So let's look at Thanksgiving first. I just want to give everybody a shout out who has sent these cards to me. So this is from Sue Sheets. She did a fun little shaker card. I need to make one of these again. This has been a while since I've had done a shaker card. This is from um, Jeannie. She sent me this beautiful um, Thanksgiving-esque thank you card, which I just love. And this is a, whoops, this is in the wrong pile. This is from Sarah. She's one of our um, fans and she's always on live here. Thank you, Sarah, for this birthday card. Beautiful template you have there. This is a book binding card and this is from Sharon. Didn't she do a great job on that Thanksgiving card? It's beautiful. Love it, Sharon. Thank you so much. And then this is from Lori. Lori watches. We'll see if she jumps on here. Uh, Lori, thank you for this Thanksgiving card. It's beautiful. And she used a uh, template. The last template we did, this was template number 12 called Layered Diamonds. So much fun. I love this template and it's perfect uh, to share that. This is from my friend Sherry sweet, nice square card. I love square cards. I just never make them because Stampin' Up! doesn't sell square envelopes. So I don't, I don't have envelopes because I only buy Stampin' Up! There's fun. Look at this background. Love this embossing folder. The little pumpkins on there and the vines. This is from my local friend, Sandy. Hi, Julie. Hi, Laura. Hi, Carol. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Mary. Welcome. We're going through all of these amazing cards that you guys have made. This is from Jill. Beautiful wreath. I love this little tiny piece of textured um, cardstock. It almost looks like fabric on there. It's just gorgeous. I have gotten one Christmas card um, so far. This it came all the way from Australia. This is from Helen. I'm Heather, sorry, Heather, and I am so excited to get this, and um, I love this little suite from last year, and so sweetly, she put this little piece of embossed um, cardstock over her card just to keep the front safe, and I'm actually going to use this today in our project, so I'm going to set that aside, and then let me show you some birthday cards. This is from Paper Pumpkin Kit. This is also from Jill. She's so good to me. She never forgets to send me cards for the holidays. She's so good about it. This is from Susan. She's one of my butterfly friends, team members. Love this. Thank you, Susan. This is from Sue Sheets. This is a birthday card. Look at that fun little quilty, quilty kind of type pattern using all those beautiful little scraps. Sue is so good at using scraps. This is from uh, my husband and he knocked it out of the park as always. He's so proud of this. He made this little 
fun little card. He put a little orange kitty on there for me. How sweet is that? He wanted to know if I'd ever made anything like this before. Um, and I think he thought he invented something like that, but she kind of did. So he, he made it out of, um, I said, I've never tried it like this without using 12 by 12 for sure. Um, I don't think I've done the angle, so we might have to come up with, with a version like this, um, to showcase his design. Cause I think it's pretty brilliant. I'm pretty proud of him. He always does such a good job. This is from Sherry. Sherry sent me this fun little birthday card. I love the squares, what we're doing today is very similar to that. This, look at that, my friend Cheryl from Florida, she sent me um, this card, the four panel card. And this is from Stephanie. She's also in Florida. She usually watches with us and she sent me this fun slimline card. So beautiful. She used a lot of shimmery effects. Can you see the sparkle on that? really pretty. Uh, this is from Sherry. I love how you cropped that Sherry. That's really cool. It's a nice effect. It really makes that focal point pop out. And this is from Claudia. She made me this fun little joy fold. Love that. Look at this. This little um, recessed panel, the diagonal one, these beautiful embellishments. This is from Diane. Thank you so much. It's gorgeous. Did my favorite thing and stamped on that background. This is from my daughter. She is an avid Paper Pumpkin subscriber. Um, I got her started when she was in college and now she uh, well, now she actually buys her own Paper Pumpkin subscription, and she buys her yearly subscription during celebration, um, and she just asked me about it, so I'll have to remind her because she can get all those free items and be a hostess, so um, tuck that in the back of your head, but she gave me this very sweet birthday card, and last but not least, this is from Judy. Judy never forgets my birthday either, and she's so, so very sweet. I love your little focal point cluster there, Judy. Oh, that was a lot of cards. I feel super loved and I appreciate every single one and I keep them and love them and thank you so very much. All right, so let's get started on our project. We'll leave this out for later. All right, here's our template. What do you think about this fun template. So it's kind of like a quilty card in some ways because we're using blocks, but it's really just a great background and an easy way to um, create lots of design on your card and to also, um, if you want to, you can make it look kind of like a quilt. So let me show you how this goes together and the pieces that you need. So since it's December, I have a new hostess code and what you are earning with your orders of $50 or more this month is a free card class for me. You'll get um, at least four cards, um, projects uh, that you can put together and um, there will be a little video just for you. So have, um, have that to look forward to. So here are the pieces you need. You need one piece uh, your card base, five and a half by eight and a half. You need one trimmed quarter that is four by five and a fourth. And then you need some designer series paper. So you need five pieces that are one and a fourth by two and a half. Four of those designer series paper, one kind of a plain cardstock or white, it just depends on how you put your colors together. This is gonna be where you stamp your greeting. Hey, Kathy, hey, Julie, hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, I just showed your beautiful card you sent me. Thank you so much. And then you're gonna need two squares that are one and one fourth inch. Okay, so one and one fourth 
Let me just move that in here. Um, these four, one and one fourth by two and a half. Then you need a kind of a solid for your greeting. And then you need two that are one and a fourth by one and a fourth. And what's great about this, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, right? If you have a pack of designer series paper, um, you know you have six sheets, right, <laughs> of different designs. They're double-sided, so it's very easy to just grab one pack of paper and to um, pick out, you know, a piece from each sheet. And they usually go together anyway, so that makes it really, really um, easy to put this template together. Okay, I need you to pick for me. I couldn't decide. These are the colors I'm using, and I have Starry Sky and Granny Apple Green, and I couldn't quite decide what the card base should be. So while I start putting this together, uh, will you comment either um, Starry Sky or Granny Apple Green? You could just say blue or green, and let's decide what the card base is gonna be. Okay, so here's how you put it together. Super easy. You want to start with the two squares and they're going to go in the opposite corners. And this is really perfectly um, measured so that there's just going to be like an eighth inch border or an edge all the way around this trimmed quarter and then in between all the squares. So you want to start with your corners. I see starry sky, starry sky. So the, I am using, so I'm, oh my goodness, I'm already all over the glue. I think the first time I squeeze it, it like, I always squeeze too hard. And then I get that little bit of muscle memory that reminds me that I'm supposed to go easy. I do like using the liquid glue though because you do have time to straighten your piece once you get it attached. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better. Okay, I think Starry Sky is going to be the winner here. That is what everybody is picking. All right, so you're gonna start by putting these two corners. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you're gonna go around the edge like this because that'll help you space everything. Now, when you cut your papers, if you have a design on your um, pattern paper that is definitely um, directional, you want to kind of think ahead a little bit about whether it's going to be one of these strips that are vertical or if it's going to be the one that's horizontal because you'll want to um, cut it the right way. So um, this one, because of the way the teacups are, we can only put it here, here, and here, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna go this way. This is the Tea Boutique paper. I'm taking a little break from Christmas right now on this particular card. And I, you know, there's people who have birthdays in December and, um, I don't like to send them a Christmas card necessarily, right? A Christmas themed card. I wanna send them, uh, so this is gonna be a, a birthday card. All right, so then I'm gonna put this one in here because that will actually made a little bit bigger than in one eighth. So let me just move this around. There we go. So leave me a comment and tell me what uh, kind of activities you have going on this first weekend in December. Are you, um, do you have some fun holiday themed type activities or events that you get to go to? All right, so I did these two, I'm doing it like this. So now I'm gonna put this one. The last one is gonna be this one because it'll just, you can kind of overlap just in case you didn't quite get all your margins the same. Um, the same, you know, width and uh, 
if you don't, I mean, I'm not getting them exactly straight here either. Don't worry about it because this template really, once you put it all together, it's, it's just so pretty and pleasing that you're not going to notice. All right, so I went around and the last one's going to be this one because this is the one we're going to stamp the greeting on. So I'm going to use, this is a birthday card, um, and this amazing little tea set doesn't really have a birthday um, greeting specifically. So I picked um, this Wishing You Everything Wonderful from Charming Sentiments. Oh, Tanya, you're dressing all your Christmas cards. Very nice. You will have so much fun finding the greetings that will fit on this little two and a half inch by one and a fourth inch piece. You'll be amazed at how many, how many you have that work in that space. Okay, so lastly, we'll add this one. Right there. Didn't that go together easily? So there you go. I'm calling this the scrambled blocks. <laughs> Um, and, and, and my friend Sue Sheets, she helped me come up with that um, name because we were kind of trying to think like from a quilting perspective, was there any kind of, I mean, it's just kind of simple rectangles and squares, but if there was any kind of pattern that this resembled. So if you are a quilter and you think this looks like some kind of pattern, definitely leave me a comment about that. I always love to tie things in to quilting. Oh, I love the blue. You guys did a good job. I think the green would be cute too, but I think the blue, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so there is the basic version. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. I feel like I'm far away. There we go. So there's the basic, basic version and all that you need to do is just add a little bit of an embellishment. And so this little corner right here is pretty perfect for some ribbon. So I'm going to take some petal pink, what's it called, petal pink, petal pink, and then the sweet sorbet, and I'm just going to tie them together in a little knot. And we'll just bring out some of the, the pinks to contrast with the blue. Okay, so we're gonna just set that right there. And then I wanted to just add a couple little embellishments. Hmm. 
we might have to, yep, I don't know, I'm going to leave it like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. There's our basic, our basic card template. Nice and easy, right? You know you've got scraps that you can use up. So I know most of you um, know this already, but just in case you're brand new today, I um, try to come up with a card template about once a month, but um, it just kind of depends when inspiration hits and I find a really good one. And then these are all free PDFs that are on my website, reallyrobinstamps.com. So you can go and find yourself a little jumping off point. So um, I didn't print number 12, but this is number 13 today. Templates are great because you can um, just follow the recipe and create something without thinking. And so the very best, um, I think, reason to use a template is that you can um, sit down to do some crafting when you really need to and you don't have to come up with something on your own you can just take uh, you know design copy it and then that's going to stimulate your creativity so that you can maybe do something original or something um, that you know it'll just It'll be like the door opening to your creativity. All right, so here are some other samples. This is with the um, Fitting Florets um, paper. And so on this one, you can see I embossed the card front before I attached it to the card, except I didn't put this greeting piece on until the end, and so everything else is... Um, embossed except for this. So I thought that would look, just kind of set it apart a little bit. This would also be nice to pop up with dimensionals just to make it a little bit lifted. And then here's one with the sweetest Christmas paper. Okay, so let's do a little bit of variation here. We'll set these aside and we're going to bring back this piece right here. From Heather and let's make a card out of her embossed cardstock because we can't let that go to waste. And I don't have this embossing folder. So this embossing folder is called Whimsical Woodland. It's on page 39. You can barely see it on this page. It's right here, but here you can see it used, right? Um, and this is one of my bargains. This is still available. That's on the clearance, um, not the clearance. It's on the last chance list and it's only $4. So that's pretty exciting. If you're going to shop, you want to make sure you check out the last chance list and the carryover list because there's a lot of things on sale, including there is a bunch of things on clearance. So um, a lot of you have taken advantage of that. All right, so we're going to take this piece. Well, I actually, oh, I jumped ahead. I jumped ahead. That's okay. Um, I'm just looking for my measurement here. All right, so we're gonna cut this at three and three fourths. By, I'm looking for my measurement. Let's just add it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, by five. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down to five. So this is another way you can use this pattern. 
So I've got her cute little um, whimsical folder here. And we're gonna do the technique that is in the catalog here because this is a good one. We're just gonna take some of our white craft ink and we're just going to direct to paper. So I'm just like gently rubbing this against the paper and it's picking up where the images are um, raised up from the embossing folder. See how that makes it pop out? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this um, to be into the squares. So I'm gonna measure the bottom at first. And I'm going to do this twice. So here's the bottom, and then I'm going to cut the side. And then I'm going to turn and cut that one, and then we'll cut this one like that. Isn't that cool? So you can just use one piece if you don't want to use a bunch of different Um, designer series papers. Okay, so let's put this on our card base. And I actually put, brought in one piece. I think I'm going to replace this greeting piece with this. Again, I'm going to start with the corners. And then go around the edge. And that will help me get them lined up the best. And I'm just keeping track of where these pieces are because um, I want the pattern of the embossing folder to still show. So it'll look like a connected piece. I bet Heather didn't know we were gonna use her embossed piece today. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna just, I can save this for another little card. And so we're gonna put this piece on a piece of Evening Evergreen. So we'll just make this a nice green card. Again, this one could be a birthday card as well. It's just kind of wintry, not necessarily Christmassy. like my greeting to pop. So I'm going to emboss. So let's bring out this little embossing kit. So this embossing kit is in the um, current mini catalog. It's going to go away um, and then come back next September. So if you love to emboss and you don't have anything like this, you might want to add it to your list because you won't see it again for a while. So Tanya, are you talking about the white craft ink? I put it on very lightly, so it's slightly tacky and it will dry eventually. It's a pigment ink. So it is um, thick 
and it stays wet for a little bit because you can use it for embossing. So this is still a little bit tacky. I did get a little bit on my fingers, but it's um, I put it on so um, lightly that it's it's you know it's soaking in pretty quickly. All right, so I used the embossing buddy, and then I stamped in the Versamark, which is my sticky ink, and I'm gonna use some white embossing powder for So Very Merry. Let's turn that in there. And then we'll hold that. Yes, the white craft ink. Okay, let's give this a little heat. <laughs> my uh my plug is loose. Okay, I like that. So just very um, monochromatic. So all it needs is some embellishment and something that will just give it a little bit of pop, which I didn't plan ahead. So let's see what we can come up with here. So kind of the obvious would be to bring these two ribbon colors in here. But I kind of also like just this little bit of black and white gingham. So let's see what happens here. We'll just try to twist three of them together. Lynn thinks it looks modern. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. It does. Yeah, it's kind of like um, a little bit non-traditional Christmas colors in some ways, but then also, yeah, the simplicity of it maybe. Is that what you think? Oh, yeah, I like that. That's just fun. Just tie in all those, all those fun colors right there. I'm gonna put on two glue dots because that knot is kind of big. And then let's add a little bit of sparkle to it and my favorite sparkle it helps that I labeled these except I can never remember what I what I called them so then I have to just look by um, <laughs> these would look cute too these are uh, retiring these are the adhesive back stars um, that go with Santa's Express. So that would add a nice little iridescent um, to it. But I'm going to use these because they look a little bit, a little bit more shiny. I want them very shiny. over here to kind of offset. All right, so that's a, another way that you can use this. So let's go back to designer series paper. And let's think a little bit about mass producing. All right, so I have a Poppy Parade card base. And 
here's the trimmed quarter. And I wanted to use this um, sweet. This is also retiring, the leaves of holly and the boughs of holly is the paper. And so here's a way you can take um, a pack of paper that you have and just cut a bunch of these sizes so that you can just kind of mass produce. You can sit um, and watch some Christmas movies and you can put these cards together. And so I just cut some of all of the six papers. Maybe I used five. I think there's one I saved because um, it's got the biggest uh, poinsettias on it. Um, so I just did a little math. Um, it's not rocket science, but if you're thinking about cutting a bunch of these, just keep in mind not only the direction of your design, like these trees are really the only design in this pack of paper, which is directional. And so I made sure that I cut it um, this way so that the trees would be vertical. So they would have to be one of these three pieces. But if you are measuring these pieces, you can get in one direction um, four of the two and a half inch cuts and you can get nine of the one and a fourth inch cuts. So technically you can get 36 of these um, rectangles from one sheet of, of 12 by 12 designer series paper. And then you're gonna have a two inch strip left over. So you could cut some of the one and a fourth inch squares from this leftover and you could get nine squares. So you can get a lot of pieces just from one piece of designer series paper. I'll just leave that up there for a second. So I'm going to bring this template back in just so you can see. So let's pick some of these pieces and put this together. I think I want, okay, so I want one of these in the corner. Like that. So for this one, I'm gonna do it just a little bit differently in that I'm gonna use designer series paper for every spot. And, and then pop up a focal point. So I'm just gonna use this template as a background instead of putting my greeting here. Here's this one here. So I'm just gonna mix and match all those colors. And let's add these. Okay, so you start with the two outside corners that are squares. And then just go around. I am going to be making a bunch of these because I think this is a really pretty um, Christmas card. So pretty. Now, of course, I'm making all of these cards into um, portrait versions, but you could very easily turn it this way and use one of these spots for your greeting, like this one right here would be perfect, and you could make this a horizontal card, right? So many possibilities, and I love that about templates. All right, so what I did ahead of time is I um, cut this beautiful framed piece out. And that makes this piece right here. And then this piece 
creates a background that can go behind here and show, some, you know, show off the details. And then I did the same thing for the holly berries. I did two shades. I did real red and cherry cobbler. This is old olive and mossy meadow. And then I used the other template or um, label that came in here. And that's where we're going to stamp our message. So let's use Christmas wishes. I'm going to attach this first. So I'm going to use, um, I put some of my multi-purpose glue into this little bottle with an even smaller end on it. And I'm going to use that to attach this. give it just a minute to set. All right, so this little frame is gonna need some adhesive so that it stays aligned with the label. So I'm going to just set this kind of where one of the um, intersections where all of these little pieces connect. Looks pretty straight. And then we'll do the same. Hey, Joan. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Sherry. Good to have you, Sherry. I showed your card. You'll have to watch watch a replay if you want. Thank you so much for the birthday card. I don't always keep every stamp set that I own um, because then I would have too many. So there's so many great stamp sets every year that, you know, I just kind of pick and choose which ones I actually keep. This will be one that I keep because I love Holly. Anything that is Holly, I keep. Let's make sure that's straight. I love this card. So beautifully Christmassy. Let's just add a couple little red rhinestones to finish it off. Well, I could actually put the rhinestone. Oh, let's do that. Let's make it super special. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, so you see I'm all ready to go. I pre-cut. I can just put my pieces together and then um, sit down and make a bunch of cards. Nice sparkle on that one, right? Okay, last thing that I'm gonna show you. I got out of order and I did the, my, um, I did the embossed one before uh, before this one, so 
apologize if it's confusing. But I wanted to play with the idea of using a full sheet. Okay, we're just gonna set you over there for a minute. Um, of using a full sheet where there's kind of a scene um, for designer series paper. And I'm just gonna show you how you cut this again if you want to do something like that. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So if you wanna take one piece, whether it's embossed, like the piece we got from Heather, or if you wanna do like a designer series paper that has a scene, like we have so many great um, papers that um, they're, they have like the scene across, you know, um, so that you can just kind of chop it into six pieces. Um, so this is another way to use this template. So this is kind of the, this is the size of the piece of paper you need. And then this is how you cut it. And I just marked one, two, three, four, um, five, six as, the order that you cut this. So the first cut is on the bottom of your piece and you cut one and a fourth and then you cut this long side here, one and a fourth. And then you turn this and cut one and a fourth. And then you turn this and you cut this in half at one and a fourth. Okay, so you've got all of those, which actually, I mean, you could do it like this without even um, cutting the smaller squares. Like that's really a cute little layout as well. But we'll go ahead and we'll cut the squares. So you just pop this one and a fourth inch square in the corner and then a one and a fourth inch square on this bottom right hand corner. Okay, so now we've got that. And I've already attached it to a piece of paper, so you don't have to watch me <laughs> glue it one more time. How cute is that? This is from the uh, paper that is the Storybook Gnome paper from the Holiday Mini Catalog. We're gonna put that on a card base. But I thought it would be fun to just go ahead and kind of quilt this with the quatrefoil. So we'll just add a little bit of quilting. Embossing, emboss quilting is what, faux quilting. Look how that just changes that into something really interesting. Hello, Stephanie. I just shared your amazing slimline card with everybody. You'll have to rewind and watch the um, watch the show and tell portion. Thank you so much for that amazing pumpkin-y birthday card. All right, so here we've got another just really great background. It has just that little bit of, of blocked, the added interest. And let's add um, a greeting. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek here. So coming in the next mini catalog starting January 5th. Look at this beautiful purple catalog. Woo so exciting. Lots of good stuff in here. Um, and of course, there's going to be a celebration. So I know we're dreaming. We've got visions of sugar plums right now, but coming right around the corner is going to be some amazing stuff. So this is a bundle um, that's going to be available. And I loved, um, I, I 
picked out this as my greeting and I was looking for something that it would fit on perfectly and it would fit on this little tag here. So this is nice. Um, it comes with these little, um, I don't know what you call them, but you can fit them inside. I'll show you what I mean. So I used this tag and when I cut it out, I put this little piece in here. And so this is gonna create a little decorative hole at the same time as you cut out the tag. And so it makes this pretty little like um, upside down teardrop, but you can see there's leaves and there's a little like tulip shape. So this, I haven't played with this at all except for today, but so exciting. And then there's this wonderful greeting set with a brand new font. I haven't seen this font um, from Stampin' Up! before and I love it. I loved the, um, the chunky capitals along with the script and great, um, great greetings, a new sympathy. I love this. I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. But back to Christmas for a second here. Let's make, finish this card. Stephanie has those dies on her wish list. I, I know. I think they're going to be great. So I'm using some early espresso to keep with our kind of soft brown theme here. And I just punched a decorative circle because I wanted to just somehow tie in this um, coral that was in here. And we're just going to back our tag on it. Like that. So if you are wanting to get the next catalogs, um, I'm already sending them to you. If you have ordered with me in the last six months, um, you're on my list and I've already selected you to receive them. If you're not sure about that, you can contact me and let me know, but, or ask, and um, I'll have a sign up for um, catalogs if you want them shipped to you at some point. So you'll be ready to go in January. So I'm taking two ribbons again. I guess this is my um, secondary theme here of using two ribbons at one time. I loved this beautiful um, natural finish ribbon. And I'm pairing it with some pool party shimmer. I think that little teardrop is so sweet. So I'm gonna cut the pool party kind of short. And then we'll leave the natural. Let's see how it looks straight. Oh, I think I like that slanted edge. This is fun to fray. And we'll pop this up and we'll call this card done. I hope that you are getting some um, ideas and you can tuck this template away if you don't have time to use it right now and try it out. It's always going to be there waiting for you when you are ready and you need something new to do. I'm going to just set that right there like that and then we're going to keep with our kind of uh, brownish theme and I'm going to pull in the champagne rhinestones and add those to our lovely little tag there. All right, let's put all my notes in one place here. Yeah, I think this is called the something fancy bundle, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not one with all of that yet. Carol's gonna try it, wonderful. 
<laughs> Cheryl's going to put those dies on her list too. Yeah, sorry about that. They're pretty awesome. I think we're going to like them. Let's bring back all our friends here. Oh, I've got one more sneak peek. This is another um, bundle that we could pre-order as demonstrators. It's going to be in that next catalog. It's called Dainty Delight. All these beautiful little hand-drawn um, wildflowers, weeds. I don't know. I don't know what they are, but they're really sweet. It's going to be fun to play with lovely die set. There's paper that is in the celebration catalog for free that coordinates with that bundle. And I took that um, designer series paper and I tried this template. <laughs> Sandy already tried it. You were stamping with me. Sandy, you're amazing. Aren't these so sweet? I mean, dainty is absolutely the right term for these dies. So sweet, the little flowers. So here's a sneak peek of some celebration paper. You're going to love it. Look at those colors. All right, now let's bring all our friends back. And you can leave a, a favorite if you have a favorite card we did today. Or you can let me know how you're going to put this template to work. And I sure hope you enjoy it. This is a fun one. This is easy. And I think that... Um, you'll be able to make a lot of cards and have a lot of fun at the same time. That's my goal, at least. I am so, look at, nah, I forgot I can switch back. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate all your time that you spend with me. Definitely, if you're watching this on the replay later, still leave me a comment and tell me what you're up to and give me a chat and um, I would love to talk with you. So until next time, thank you so much. Bye.